our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord.
this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.
that officers and committee chairs are to get their annual reports of missions to Rich Pfeiffer by Sunday, January 29th. The other announcement that I have is that tomorrow at 11 o'clock, there will be a baptism here at the church. Uh, the baptism will be the baptism of little Julia uh, Mossman, and uh, anyone who is able to come is invited to be a part of that. Anything else this morning? Seeing nothing, our service continues with the reading of God's holy word. The lesson is written in Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Here endeth the lesson. The epistle is written in Romans chapter 12. St. Paul writes, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy, with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Here endeth the epistle. <clears throat> the Lord sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Hallelujah. Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. 
Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. This is the gospel of the Lord.
grace to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel lesson begins with a simple little word. It says, and the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. <clears throat> now this third day reference does for us two things. First of all, it connects us up with the events of chapter 1, which is very important because the events of chapter 1 deal with the mission of John the Baptist as it relates to Jesus Christ. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But this third day thing here, it also brings up a number of Old Testament themes that we should consider. For example, in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis chapter 22, we read the story of the sacrifice of Isaac. God tested Abraham, told him to take his son, his only son Isaac, whom you love, and sacrifice him on the mountain that I will show thee of. And so Abraham takes his servants and he takes Isaac and he takes a donkey with the wood for the sacrifice and the fire and they head off to the land of Moriah and the Bible says here then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off so Isaac and Abraham head off to the place while the servants remain behind. And then little Isaac says to his father, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And of course, we know the rest of the story that uh, at the last moment, Abraham was stopped by the angel of the Lord and there was a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. And therefore, Abraham names the place in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen. What shall be seen? The lamb which God has provided. And this is why our story of the wedding at Cana, right at the beginning, connects up Jesus with this lamb that was spoken about. The lamb that shall be seen. The lamb that shall be provided. And just as in chapter 1, John the Baptist said of Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. <clears throat> so here, as we contemplate the miracle at Cana, <clears throat> excuse me, as we contemplate the miracle at Cana, we are shown that this miracle is a confirmation of the word of John the Baptist concerning Jesus, that he is the Lamb of God. And so when we, when we think about this miracle, the turning of the water into wine is a sign that John the Baptist's confession of Christ is indeed the very truth, and he is God's Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Now as we come to the idea of the water jars for the purification of the Jews, it's no mistake that Jesus uses them to fill with water and then make wine. Because what he's saying thereby is, my blood is the once and for all atonement for the sins of the whole world. And just like Jesus made 
way more wine than any wedding would normally ever need. So it is that the blood of Jesus is a fathomless, bottomless <coughs> container of God's grace, mercy, and salvation for us. But there's another Old Testament reference to the third day. And it, it will do us well to consider this as well. In the book of Exodus, the children of Israel have come to Mount Sinai and they are awaiting uh, the Lord's manifestation of his glory. And it says, uh, and it says that on the third day, on the third day, the Lord came down in the morning and that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. All right? So in other words, God comes down, manifests his divine glory on Mount Sinai in such a way that the people of Israel are just utterly overwhelmed. And so, going back to our story here, here, the Lamb of God, here, the giver of the Holy Ghost, here, the Savior of the world, the one and only Redeemer, is embarking on his mission to bring the gospel of eternal salvation to all people. All right, because wherever the church goes and proclaims the gospel, Jesus Christ goes and proclaims the gospel, you see? And so the Lord here is telling us by this miracle in which it says at the end of the text, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed in him. So just as, just as the Lord, Jehovah, manifested his glory on Mount Sinai, so here, at the beginning of his earthly mission, the Lord Jesus manifests his glory and his disciples believe in him. And this is the reason why this miracle is the first of his miracles, because it begins a mission and a ministry and a giving of the good news of Jesus Christ so that all people may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus takes six water pots of stone used for the purification rituals of the Jews. And he has them filled up to the brim with water. And then he turns the water into wine and has the servants bear it unto the governor of the feast. It's not an accident that the pots of stone that were used for Jewish purification rituals are used by Jesus to make this new and wonderful and surpassing wine. Because by this miracle, Jesus wants to know that the old covenant is coming to an end. The, the covenant of the law is at an end. And the new covenant of the remission of sins in Jesus Christ is dawning. All right, that's number one. Also, 
remembering that the miracle in chapter 2 here reminds us of the events of chapter 1. And in chapter 1, we learn that John baptized with water, but that when the Messiah comes, he will baptize with the Holy Ghost. And so the turning of water into wine is a sign that in Jesus Christ, we have the one who by his atoning work has once and for all made sacrifice and atonement for our sins. And that <coughs> Christian baptism is a means by which the forgiveness of sins, life and, and, and uh, salvation are given to us and faith is ministered to us. Jesus Christ is really and truly present and he is our savior and in this miracle we are shown with crystal clarity that when we believe in him we are doing what is good and proper and appropriate because he is the king of kings the lord of lords he is the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world he is the one upon the holy upon whom the holy ghost descended and remained and therefore is the baptizer in the holy ghost and the son of the living god to all this this sign this miracle testifies that we may be strengthened in faith. Amen. The peace of God that passeth all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus.
and surpassing love in granting unto us a ransom for our sins. We praise thee that the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. We praise thee that thou hast prepared thy salvation before the face of all people and hast established thy continual presence and power among us. We praise thee that thou hast also brought us into the fellowship of thy beloved Son by thy bright light of thy word, so that we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but partakers of thy grace, fellow citizens with the saints, members of thy household, and heirs of thy kingdom. We will extol thee, O our God. We will bless thy name forever and ever. We will exalt thee and sing unto thee, for thou hast remembered thy covenant and sent salvation unto thy people. Amen. We sing our communion in. Now 
do we praise thee that thou didst send unto us thine only begotten Son, and that in him, being found in fashion as a man, thou didst manifest the fullness of thy glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for thy sins. May we strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. shed for the remission of thy sins. May we strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Mm-hmm. 